Good morning, my name is Marcela Mora. I'm a tropical botanist working at the Missouri Botanical Garden. And today, uh, my colleague, uh, William Ulate, and I are going to talk about the annotation needs uh, of the botanical community in a digital library. So the Center for Biodiversity Informatics of the Missouri Botanical Garden has been involved with the creation of different uh, online repositories, uh, making biodiversity information uh, available to researchers, students, and citizen scientists globally. So here we have examples of the repositories like Tropicals, Botanicals, um, Biodiversity Heritage Library, and the World Flora Online. Of all those repositories, they have in common that they uh, contain taxonomic information. And for those who doesn't know, taxonomy is the science of describing names, um, of describing species, naming and classifying living and extinct organisms. So the taxonomic literature uh, has existed for over uh, 250 years, and uh, Carl Linnaeus um, was a Swedish botanist, and he's considered the father of uh, taxonomy. And actually, coincidentally, today is his 312th birthday. <laughs> so, uh, Species Plantarum uh, was published in 1753, and was his, uh, the first work in which uh, the binomial nomenclature was applied. So it was uh, because of Linnaeus that we now use uh, the binomial nomenclature. For example, Homo sapiens uh, is composed of two parts. Homo is the genus, and sapiens is the specific epithet. After that publication, botanists have published more than one 0.2 million plant names. So thanks to the efforts of the Missouri Botanical Garden, and now we can have access to historical botanical uh, literature. And uh, thanks to um, a portal that is called Botanicus that contains 2,000 titles uh, between books and journals, uh, two and a half million pages, etc. Here we see uh, how it looks. Uh, however, it uh, doesn't have annotation functionalities, but it has OCR transcription. So one of the uh, real use cases uh, in which annotations are important or useful for botanists uh, is represented here. She's a, a botanist, uh, San, Sandra Knapp, for, from the Natural History Museum in London. And she was looking at a plant specimen and wanted to know what she, who, who was the collector, uh, but she couldn't understand the writing. Mm. So she asked in Twitter, like, if somebody knew or recognized that name. And after a long search, uh, somebody realized that the author was a C.G. Trapnell. And if this name would have been annotated, it, uh, the discovery would be very easily. So, Although many um, digital libraries have OCR uh, transcription functionalities, historical manuscripts still present uh, a lot of challenges. Uh, for example, uh, the uneven inking, the irregular orthographies, the multilingual text, and the deficiency quality of uh, pages to be digitized. So in some cases, the output is total gibberish. <laughs> uh, 
And in other cases, even if the OCR is perfect, one single name can be found in many other names. In this case, Archibald Byron McCallum is uh, written in 17 different way, ways. So again, uh, um, annotation in this case, it would be very useful. Among taxonomists, um, botanists have a wider uh, a array of stand standardized reference tools. Here, for example, we have the International Plant Names Index, in which you can um, find, you can search the data, you can search for the plant names or by the authors or for the publications. So if you want to search for Mangifera indica, that is most commonly known as mango, you will find uh, this information. So it tells you the family. It says the family is Anacardiaceae. It's also the same family as the poison ivy. Um, the species uh, is Mangifera indica, and it has an ID associated with it. And also, you can see that it says Mangif Mangifera indica and an L. So that L is an abbreviation that it has been standardized for a long time. And uh, it represents uh, Linnaeus, the author is Linnaeus. And uh, you can see like the, it was published in uh, 1753. Also the publication is also a standardized abbreviation. And, um, and the name of the publication is Species Plant Plantarum. In all, it also has an ID. So taking advantage of all these tools, uh, in the past, the Center for Biodiversity Informatics wanted, uh, took those uh, tools and conceptualized and designed different projects to annotate manually and automatically uh, within a digital library. So here we have an example of those projects like Science Gopi, Gossip, Mining Biodiversity, and Port Full gaming. However, when some of the products of mining biodiversity were evaluated by the potential users, they did not show a strong indication of whether the features were really wanted. So, um, what we did was uh, we came to with this idea of a project, uh, a planning grant uh, funded by IMLS to uh, try to look for uh, the real needs of uh, botanical users in terms of annotations. Because we IT people could come up with these great ideas that at the end, they really didn't see how they were useful. Um, we already had an extension for one year. Uh, we presented here last year uh, of what we were gonna do. Well, we've done some of that. Uh, one thing that I want to mention was that we came with several hypotheses that we wanted to prove. Uh, we were thinking maybe it's the tools or the technologies that are really not there, and we're just, uh, or the effort required to uh, employ them outweighs the benefits, like it was mentioned in a talk before. Um, perhaps it's a matter of uh, technology adoption. We even thought that um, uh, some of the users told us, well, we, we don't know what to do it with, except what we already know. Or maybe it's even a, a, an age gap or a digital gap in some, in some cases. So those are kind of the, the, the questions that we have. Um, we also found out that it could be that it's not the taxonomists the ones that are gonna use those. So the taxonomists have the knowledge to annotate, but they might not be the ones who get, beneficial, get the benefits out of it. Um, most of them, as I said, couldn't recognize the the value or the potential value of those tools, they didn't see themselves dedicating much time to do it. Um, even during a previous test case with a tool that allowed to annotate for six months, we had it, unfortunately it was proprietary and we had some issues with it, we had to take it out, but we found that there were some uh, annotations. And as I said, uh, they were not from exactly the taxonomies themselves, but the uh, botanical community in general, and that's why we created this project. We did find some of use, the use cases, um, something, some of the things that we thought that are usually 
what botanists could do. But we really wanted to make sure those were the real needs. So we came with this uh, project that was going to analyze the web annotation needs of the botanical community, um, and in the process, uh, prioritize them, uh, try to create a prototype to show how these needs could be dealt with, um, and then evaluate some of the tools out there to see which ones uh, would uh, attend the needs. The audience of this project will be, uh, of course, the users of a digital library, uh, particularly the librarians who are looking to improve their virtual library, uh, enabling the users to add content to it, the developers who want to choose a tool to enable those annotations in their online solutions uh, and digital platforms, and the botanists who want to enhance that corpus of the digital library collections uh, by augmenting the knowledge. So we came with, the, uh, with a survey and tried to get uh, four deliverables. The needs analysis report, uh, feasibility studies of the existing tools, a proof of concept prototype, and the outcomes. So far we did the survey, um, and I'm gonna quickly go through some of the uh, uh, results that we had, because we don't have some, too much time. Um, we interviewed 40 members of the botanical uh, and scientific communities from 10 different institutions in nine countries. Uh, we got a diverse representation sample um, uh, with a lot of uh, Latin American uh, representatives because that's where uh, most of the um, uh, plant biodiversity is. Uh, Two-thirds of them were identified themselves as uh, females. Half of the people had a botanical background, but we also had entomologists, ecologists, uh, librarians, even an ex-lawyer uh, who was doing actually annotations. Um, and we included both. We open up to those who are annotating and those who didn't think they were annotating but later realized that some of the things they did were actually annotations. Uh, the optional part also uh, allows us to see that uh, one-fifth of them were younger than 34 years, one-fifth were older than 55, another fifth was between the ages of 45 and 54, and two-fifths between 35 and 44. We had all sorts of profiles, uh, not only the uh, curators or uh, students, we even have uh, uh, Wikimedians, project managers, professors, and so on. Um, and we asked them, what do you annotate? And of course, they always say the specimens, because that's what they do. They go and annotate on the specimens. We're, but we're interested in the digital library. And we try to go and guide the questions into um, what other things do you annotate? Uh, if you annotate in the margin, if you annotate on a PDF, and so on. Uh, they came up with the usual books, articles, and images. Uh, actually, they also came up with photocopies and printed articles and, and uh, annotating when they were reviewing uh, papers, um, images of live plants, and so on, uh, chapters within a book. And now that sounds more like what we're trying to find uh, the, from our digital library problem. Uh, we also asked them, what's the granularity that they were uh, annotating? Some of them were the whole resource at the page level, uh, text within a page, and one important thing, a region within a page. Um, some of these digital libraries you saw are actually images that are, so um, the part of the region that it's, uh, they're talking about is sometimes important. Um, they also came with other uh, uh, things on, on what level they were um, annotating. Uh, we also asked them, why do you annotate? And then came with uh, these uh, few, uh, well, many um, annotation reasons. <laughs> Um, but we try to analyze them, and it says, basically, uh, and quickly, uh, in work they tend to share more. If it's personal annotations, they, they keep it to themselves. In general, they did have all the usual things, comprehension, uh, recall, um, discussions, uh, collocate things uh, that, that go together, linking, peer reviewing, and so on. Um, but they also had things specific to the field. Georeferencing, like we saw yesterday, um, morphological features, uh, um, habit descriptions, if it's a tree or a grass, that's very important for them. Uh, correcting names, because names have changed throughout time, so they usually want to do that. We also thought, well, what in the process of research, when, what stage do you annotate? Uh, it came all over the map. So they, some do it at the beginning, some do it at the end. Um, any tool would have to be able to add annotations at every stage. We also ask, uh, how often do you do it? Uh, turns out that most of them daily, but some of them even hourly. They just keep annotating everything they want. It's kind of part of the job. Others were weekly and, and so on. 
what methods do they use? And this is where it came, we had to open up, like I said, well, the only thing I know is a PDF, Adobe, uh, you know, Adobe, Adobe, uh, Adobe Acrobat, and that's it. And then we start asking, like, well, when you go to discussions in the, the clubs, when you, in the journal clubs, when you get to, together, when you correct things, and they start opening up to other tools that they were actually using, they never thought those could be thought of as uh, annotations. And we have uh, uh, Kindle, they like, for example, that Kindle shows the most highlighted parts. So it tells you something about what you're looking at. Uh, Discus, as I mentioned, uh, WordPress, Sotero, it was mentioned before, and so on. Some other things specifically to the field, bless you. Um, uh, of course, the specimens and the labels, and they always gonna mention that first. But then uh, some proprietary software to uh, do annotations on microscopy, photographs. Um, some of the uh, actually infrastructure that exists out there that allows them to do some sort of comments. Uh, iNaturalist, uh, Notes for Nature, Transcription Center from Smithsonian, um, EOL, and so on. And they also use some vocabularies and checklists, the plant lives, worms, cattle lives, and so on. Um, we also ask them, why do you use these methods? What is it that, why do you like it so much? And yes, that's what they, they were thought with. with. Um, that's uh, what they use, that's uh, what they feel comfortable with. But some went on and talked about shareability, simplicity, flexibility, and so on. Um, did we asked him about the, those uh, vocabularies or existing lists. And of course, they mentioned the ones that uh, Marcella mentioned. They even went to ontologies. Some of them would use ontologies and annotate with those um, uh, for more um, um, high-ended uh, processing of the, of the content. Um, and then uh, we asked him, how do you, how do you use them? Well, some of them use them just once. Some of them just keep them there forever, never come back to them. Some of them try to come whenever there's a new project or a new use. Um, we also had interesting, not only people who wanted to keep it private completely, others wanted to share as the minute they wrote it. And we even tried to find out if there was some process of reviewing the, the, the annotation before putting it public. There was a, a pool, we felt, between the researcher who wanted to keep it because that might be the next great idea, um, or, or because, oh my God, they're gonna, it's my uh, uh, responsibility, they're gonna see this comment that has nothing to do, so I don't wanna share that. Or the citizen science who sometimes feels like this is knowledge, we gotta set it free. Um, so we asked them, who do you share that with? And the responses were a balance between public and private, as I said. Four out of 14 said, no one, just myself. And they will never share that. But the conclusion was that any tool would need to have functionality to keep them private, to share it in a group, share it with everyone. And we even found a fourth kind of, which is share it with those people who have been uh, logged into the system because there are people who are recognized. It's not the public anywhere, but you can also always know who's talking, who's doing comments, who's, who's annotating your annotation. Um, do, we, do you read or see other people's annotations? Never, never. We never do that. But then, yes, actually they do. It's a, it's a, it happens. It's not that they're looking for it. But um, they do find it, ended up saying, yes, we do need to, that to be discoverable. Um, we need to be, have, be able to overwrite an annotation or correct an annotation before it's done. Um, and if, if we do that, maybe we have to handle versioning of some sort. Um, about the process of betting or reviewing, uh, yeah, as they said, uh, no, usually we, we, we keep in private. Um, in some cases they do have, as we saw before, the editorial process review, which of course is, uh, has a, a lot of reviewing uh, back and forth. Um, but they do have to have the option to, to be made uh, private and change it to uh, visible to a group and, and public and so on. Um, what information do you put in an annotation? And as taxonomist, names, habitats, corrected names, geographic locations, we know that, nodes, reviews, links, and so on, so on. Uh, many of these are hap uh, easily matched to the W3 see um, uh, motivations, um, and we're doing that. Um, an annotation should allow for rich text, so you should be able to put uh, um, um, text and images and, and write the link and the link is recognized, so you can just click on it and go to where you're doing it. Um, ideally, you should be able to, uh, if it's an image, go and choose between that many specimens, just the one that I'm referring to. Um, how can you, uh, your process be improved was our last question. And they said um, uh, things like uh, very easy to integrate with all the current existing uh, software, 
uh, implement search and, and uh, order functionality of the um, annotations to, to create process, uh, to create reports and things that would be useful um, and reuse them. Um, previous annotations, try to do some sort of configuration. Um, how can your current annotation, well, they also kept uh, saying uh, recommendations, the, the sharing was important. Um, as again, the tools, existing tools, Sotero and so on. Uh, and one last thing that they said was, uh, allow for a talk page. In some of the projects that we had, we have had a talk page which turned out to be very useful for the community because they, they share with others. They, even the power users come out there and they start handling things that the tool doesn't have. They just find a way to cope with it. If it's list of uh, the um, authors, list of uh, um, um, artists and so on. Um, some of the things that we came up with, no anonymous logging, the privacy, support some sort of workflow for editorial process, uh, store locally, not, but not only locally, always globally, and optionally also a copy locally. And um, it's a default to see all the annotations, but being able to hide them and filter them. And finally, we uh, did a prioritization of those needs. We came up with 40 requirements, 19 of must do, 15 that we should probably do, and 10 that we could, would be nice to have. That 15 assumptions, and we even came up with five questions that we still have to figure out um, how to deal with. Um, as I mentioned before, the uh, fourth kind of uh, group is someone who is registered. Uh, so it's not public, it's just anyone who's registered, because then they know who is commenting or doing whatever uh, they are. So uh, finally, we are we're in the process of working for uh, feasibility, and Marcelo is going to help us with that. Um, it's trying some of those tools. We even uh, heard yesterday of some others that we might have to be looking into. Uh, we'll be glad to look at them and try them and against the list that we have, figure out what changes should be done. Um, this project is an exploratory project, so we want to do a bigger project with partners and so on, saying, okay, how do we get whatever tools, whatever exists, into complying with this so we can recommend our users to use that. And finally, we did a um, prototype. We're still developing the prototype, uh, trying to see how the annotations would work with uh, images and how to handle those things that we are recommending and if it's possible or not. Um, this has uh, been stored in Rerum as a repository. Um, next steps, identify requisites, uh, requisites, best practices, further developments, and so on. And of course, involve any partners that you uh, or anybody else can recommend us. And please uh, contact us for that. I'll be so I know people may be thinking about lunch, which is our next step. But do we have any questions for these fine folks? People may be too hungry. OK, well, they will be here. Oh, wait, we have, we have one. Yes. So um, thank you for your presentation, um, and I like how you built upon what you talked about last year. For the identifiers that are used in the different publications, have you thought about trying something with annotation to connect up with places where the, that, result, that the identifiers might resolve to? To show on that's top. The, yeah that's the, that's the whole point to 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 leverage that leverage because that. that way if if the tool could show and choose or or look up for those mm -hmm. then we will already do the a, a hard uh, link so that A B McCallum would not be a nightmare uh, it's just just you just find the right one mm -hmm. yes okay. thanks <coughs> Great, thank you.